Hello and welcome to this introduction to the yield curve brought to you by Passing Score, where you can get more help on your exam prep at PassingScoreFinance.com. In this video, we'll be going over debt maturities and how they make up the term structure of interest rates, how when we graph that term structure, we get our yield curve, and the implications of various yield curve shapes. So let's take a look at a, an example of some maturities of a fixed income of these different borrowings and lendings from overnight all the way up to five years. If we put some interest rates to that, we can see that they increase significantly from our overnight seven days all the way up to five years to 4%. And what that reflects is not just the increased risk that the issuer will default on their borrowing, but market changes as well. There's interest rate volatility, volatility as well as other forces at work uh, that increase the risk of that borrowing. So we have our lower risk uh, at overnight to seven days all the way up to our five year, which reflects a much higher risk. And so we're demanding a higher compensation to reflect that. Uh, together, these make up the term structure of interest rates. Uh, and if we graph that, we can see something like this, which shows an increase in interest rates and risk uh, as the different maturities, uh, the terms of the borrowings increase. Now this is for the same credit risk at each maturity. So this isn't reflecting uh, 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 someone that has a bad risk uh, out at the longer time. It's the exact same credit rating uh, or you can think of it as the same issuer. So the only difference here is the time period, and that's what the yield curve is telling you. And a yield curve is only for a certain point in time, so a certain day, a certain point uh, only. The interest rate markets are constantly moving, uh, so this would only be good for uh, that time period in which it was taken. And as I said, this, they're different, this is for one credit rating, uh, so we have a yield curve for government-issued uh, debts. We have a, a yield curve for different uh, corporate credit ratings. Uh, and those can tell you a lot about the credit spread, how the market is looking at the economy, uh, and the risks they think they're, they're out there, as well as the overall uh, economic outlook. So let's take a look at some typical examples of uh, overall yield curves. We have our normal or positive yield curve in which long-term rates are higher than short-term rates. And this reflects an expectation that there's gonna be good, uh, or at least positive economic growth uh, in the future. And there's gonna be some inflation that will need to be compensated for, which is part of that uh, increasing return over time, is the higher inflation that uh, it's gonna have, have to be paid back to get a real return on our, uh, on our lending. Uh, we also have what's called a negative or inverted yield curve. In this case, short-term rates are somehow higher than long-term rates. Now, this is a very pessimistic view of the future economic outlook and that there will be much lower inflation or deflation in the future. In fact, uh, studies show that a negative or inverted yield curve has predicted recessions every time since 1970. So those lower returns reflect uh, uh, much less uh, inflation, which will have to be compensated for in the future, as well as an expectation that uh, the Fed and market rates, uh, interest rates will decrease uh, in the future because of that economic stagnation. We also can have a flat uh, yield curve. This is a short-term and long-term rates, which are roughly equal, and this reflects, as you might guess, a strong uncertainty in the future economic outlook. Uh, there might be some indicators, uh, economic indicators that are very positive and some that are very negative, and the market's not sure which way it's going to go, whether the yield curve should uh, be positive or negative. So we might have in that intervening time a flat yield curve. Well, that's it for our introduction to yield curves. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at john at passingscorefinance.com. And thank you for listening.